What's up fans of ACBA and welcome to a short and sweet episode of ACBA Saturdays. On today's episode, Fabio takes us through an in-depth interview with Hasbro. I go ahead and let you know all about the new Super Saiyan 3 head sculpt with a one minute review. Fabio is back to compare two NECA Terminator figs. And of course, Bug Nice closes out the episode with his very own bump segment. You can find all of this great original content on today's episode of ACBA Saturdays. Hello, welcome to San Diego Comic Con 2016. I'm Fabio, they call me Colonel Crackers, and I'm here with Dwight Stahl of Marvel Legends here at Hasbro, the hottest booth in the entire con. And I think so. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. But there's a lot of really cool stuff on display here, so you should come in anyway and check it out. So Dwight, please tell us what we've got going on here. Okay, yeah, um, well behind us is our, our, is our wall for fans. It's our all of our Legends lines, which now, as you know, includes three and a quarter inch, six inch, 12 inch, and our new premium role play, uh, which we're debuting for the first time to the public here this weekend. Mm -hmm. He's obsessed with the Iron Man helmet. Yeah, it's nice, right? He wants it. And, 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 and something that's that sweet for only 100 bucks is yeah. pretty awesome. I agree. Cosplay city. You know, everyone's going to be wanting exactly. after cosplay. Exactly. That's, that's the plan. Good, good. That's the plan. So tell us about the 12 inch stuff. It's basically the return of Marvel Legends icons. And this comes from someone who's been collecting Legends since 2000. So it's exciting yeah. to see. Yeah, it's been since, I think we stopped doing icons around 2008. So it's been a very long time since we've dipped our toes into that 12 inch premium action figure category. And with that being said, we're like, hey, there's been you know a gap in our portfolio for a while. Where can we go with it? And just last year, we just started talking about 12 inch. And here you go. Cap, Iron Man, uh, Spider-Man, we debuted these at Toy Fair. Um, they're you know super uh, articulated. Uh, really, really nice premium deco. Uh, debuting them to the public for you guys to see for the first time this weekend. And then just uh, the other day, we added in Deadpool to the mix, which is our first figure that we're debuting for 2017. Awesome. So yeah, he comes with all sorts. So you can see Headpool and lots and lots of gear and accessories. A chimichanga, of yeah, course. Cool. Why not, right? Why not? I'm glad you guys didn't, didn't just upscale like the, the taco from the, the small release. You know, that's good that you guys made a new accessory for that. Oh yeah, there's so, there's so much wonderful cuisine in the, you know, to, to choose from. So let's move into the Doctor Strange wave right here. Two movie figures and then a couple of uh, comic figures. So tell us about those. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, Doctor Strange comes out in around October. Um, what you see in the case is actually production samples. So this is you know, what they're going to look like when you find them on the store shelves and we're really, really pleased with uh, the quality that uh, these figures represent. Um, so yeah, we have a, a couple of movie figures we're de debuting here, uh, Carl Mordo and Doctor Strange. We have one more movie figure that you'll be finding out about in the future and one more classic figure that's not yet shown in this wave. Very cool. I see the Brother Voodoo from the last year Doctor Strange set. Or was that the year before? I'm sorry. Uh, that was last year. Yeah, last year we gave you uh, Doctor Voodoo. This year we retweaked him a little bit. He's got a new cape, new deco, going back to uh, his Brother Voodoo look. Uh, new classic Strange, uh, Nico, her from the Runaways, her first action figure ever. Um, with our staff of one and we have a new Iron Fist which is really a sweet action figure. He's got interchangeable forearms so you can have him like his training wraps or you can pop on translucent bone chi powered arms so if you actually hold it up to the light you can see his internal skeleton inside of his flesh like he's uh, powering up his chi to lay the smack down on That's someone. Really awesome. I'm glad you guys use the pizza spidey mold because that that butterfly joint it just adds so much to it. Oh, yeah for martial arts character yeah it's, it's, it's totally totally key. And effects there's a huge thing you guys are doing now which is so appreciated by people in the displaying community, oh, our ACBA. Everybody loves having lots of effects, so I'm glad you guys are including them and making some new original ones for the movie ones as well. Yeah, yeah, no, um, we, we, that was a, a, a missing piece of the, of the uh, formula, right? A, a few years ago, we didn't have any of that stuff, and then we're like, no, it's time to add it, you know. And uh, yeah, we started with the, uh, the effects that were on Scarlet Witch, and uh, since then we've grown it with a handful of different types of power-ups just because every character has these different types of signature things. We haven't got them all covered yet, but we got a few more in the works and hopefully you'll be seeing more of them uh, in the upcoming future. Excellent. Excellent. And speaking of upcoming future, we got some more MCU figures here. Some of them have just been revealed, like what, yesterday? Yeah. Tell us about those. Yeah, um, along with exclusives that are coming out this year, like the War Machine, which is in a two-pack for Target, and then the, the Walmart's uh, Movie Falcon and Winter Soldier, we debuted this weekend our first uh, uh, dip into the waters with Netflix. So um, we have some fantastic characters. We're not talking about how they're coming out or where they're coming out yet. Those plans are still being uh, you know, held back. But uh, we think the Frank Castle and Jessica Jones figure look absolutely amazing. Hopefully you guys think so too. Um, they're probably some of the best decos that we've put on things th thus far. 
And as you've seen in the cases, our factories and uh, the whole process is getting stronger, delivering better high quality figures to shelf to you. So we're hoping we can match something pretty darn close to what you're seeing with these prototypes. I'm definitely impressed with these. These look really good. Um, moving on, let's talk about the X-Men wave because, again, as someone who's been collecting Legends since the beginning, I've been waiting for some of these characters for such a long time. One in particular, I think you know which one, and that's Jim Lee Cyclops. That is so exciting. Please tell us how that came about. What took so long, really? What took so long? Well, yeah. So what we got with uh, X-Men is this year we have the Juggernaut wave, which is just starting to ship. People are super excited about it. It's been a long time since we've done X-Men. Uh, the success of and the initial pounce on the X-Men is allowing us to move on to a year or two, which you know, which we'll be going all through some more fantastic characters, trying to give you some more uh, new characters that you don't have yet. And we debuted about three quarters of the wave this weekend. The build a figure is Warlock, um, you know, a giant phalanx uh, character, all gold, all black. He looks really, really cool. Um, Colossus is our first classic Colossus to the Legends line. We have Disco Dazzler, which was the first debut on Marvel.com. We just uh, showed Polaris off. Uh, she's been in a, on, on the want list for a very long time, so we're happy to finally check her off and move on to the next one. Jim Lee Cyclops has obviously been you know top 10 for forever. And then we have a couple of uh, hidden, hidden ones that we're gonna hold back, maybe for uh, uh, either Hasbro Pulse or no, no New York Comic Con uh, this coming fall. Excellent. Now moving on to the Guardians wave, we got the new kid Nova, Vance Astro. Tell us a bit about that one. Yeah, uh, that is our that is the class we we're showing the classic side of Wave One of 2017. Uh, most importantly, is Angela. Angela was the fan choice winner from last year's uh, Comic Con bracket poll, and we are you know debuted her to show you guys what she looks like. She's all new. Uh, I hope you guys like her. She is a height that's somewhere between Moonstone and She Hulk. So since she's got that Asgardian blood, she's a little bit, and she's a you know a super you know impressive warrior. We gave her kind of that more you know uh, heroic build, somewhere in the middle for those uh, tall Asgardian characters. Uh, yeah, Kid Nova, Sam Alexander, and the builder figure is one of his adversaries, Titus, a fallen Black Nova, uh, you know giant uh, tiger man thing from outer space with a gun for an arm. It makes no sense, but yet it looks pretty cool. Uh, Darkhawk, he's been asked for for many, many years. Uh, and I think I might be missing the, oh yeah, Vance Astro. We have Vance Astro in there as well. Uh, what you're not seeing is the remainder of the wave, which is movie-based figures. Okay, so this one's gonna accompany the Guardians Volume 2? Yeah, Guardians Volume 2, we have three movie characters that we're gonna be debuting at a later date. Uh, we're still working with the studios to find out when they want to release that information. So when we know more, you know, so will you. Tantalizing. Yeah. Moving on, we've got the next Spider-Man wave, which has a very, fan requested character also which is black costume spider-man yep. so go on tell us yeah uh this is once more wave one of 2017 so expect to see that sometime between january and march of next year uh and yeah we have spider-man 2099 all new all different his uh, white uh, alternate costume which is pretty striking in toy form mm -hmm. uh Absolutely. you know one of the biggest if not the biggest uh, spider villain of all time in green goblin Definitely. and i'm glad you guys decoded it a little different as far as the the pumpkin bomb yeah yeah i like that yeah yeah tony our uh, our uh, painter uh likes to always try to mix things up make sure if we're bringing pieces back out we can make them new and fresh for you guys again like uh, the dazzler effect looks really cool the exactly. same dr strange effect but it looks so much cooler exactly well thank you uh, next up is Spider uh, UK, uh, one of the characters that came out of Spider Verse uh, about a year, year and a half ago, maybe. You know, it was a giant uh, explosion of Spider characters from uh, Marvel uh, Comics when the Inheritors were going through all the realms, uh, killing them all. So, which we were excited about. Not that they were killing them all, because that's not good. But we were super excited that they gave us all these new great Spider characters to recreate in toy form. So, he's he's one of those. And what body mold is he on? He's on an all new body mold. Uh, I thought I didn't recognize, but I didn't want to be presumptuous. No, no, you, you are right. Uh, and so is 2099. Oh, Both okay. of those are 100% new. They're the same height. Well, in theory, we don't have the production samples in yet, but they're intended to be the same height as Bucky Cap. And uh, that way we have more base bodies that have some more variety. So when we're doing those normal, yeah, normal, I wish I looked like that, normal. So um, if those normal bodies, uh, we've got a little bit of a thinner guy and a little bit more of a powerhouse guy to help give the, the fans a little more variety on their toy shelves. Okay, is Vance Astro on that same body? Vance Astro's on the Grim Reaper body. Okay, okay. So he's a little bit more uh, uh, powerful. Gotcha. Now, another exciting one is Kamala Khan, the new Ms. Marvel, interchangeable hands. Tell us about it. Yeah, she has interchangeable arms. She's got her big, stretchy, uh, super-sized fist and a slap hand. Uh, and both, uh, you can you can power her down and give her her normal, just kind of a, 
to standard arms, depending on how you want to play or pose her. Uh, yeah, she's uh, one of the newest in human characters. She's been out for a couple of years now. She's got a lot. Of, she's got her own comic book. You know, we're super excited to be able to bring her to Toy Form for the first time here. Uh, I think she looks absolutely amazing. Once more, I hope you guys feel the same way. And uh, and that would take us to uh, Jackal. You know, another all new body in this wave. Uh, our our first, maybe. Our first all classic Harry body we've done yet for Legends line. So we're hoping to get some reuse out of that in the future with some of those crazy monstrous characters, which would be cool. But we thought, you know, uh, why not start it with a mad scientist, you know, with some big, big crazy ears. Do you have a personal wish list of any characters you want to see on that body? On that body? Uh, well, I don't know. A lot of people actually at the show have been asking for classic Avengers Beast on that body. Since he's a lot smaller than as he was in the Avengers. So, yeah, maybe we could get a Beast on there. Um, I would like to see Werewolf by Night. You know, some of those types of things would be really cool. Uh, maybe even vermin, you know, a whole bunch of different types of nasty uh, critters. So. And one last thing I want to talk about before I let you go. Uh, we got to talk a little bit before the interview actually started about the Spider-Man that came in the raft set yeah. and how you couldn't actually interchange the hands with the original Pizza Spidey. Could you just tell the audience a little bit why that happened? Yeah, no, the, uh, we're actually, you know, we're going to have to look into that and find out. It was never intended that uh, the wrist joints are different than the last one. Uh, and it wasn't something, because he didn't come with variant parts, uh, we didn't like, uh, we just weren't paying that, we didn't check that. We didn't see that little thing that, that was changed. So we're going to go back, we're going to talk to the factories, find out why it was adjusted was it a quality issue did they want to make sure that it didn't fall out in package because that's a very unique package uh, and he's exposed a lot in there more so than he's trapped in our normal maybe the normal plug wasn't um, sturdy enough and we didn't want to obviously ship a bunch of toys with the hands falling off which you know is is uh, a benefit for customizers when we intend that to happen but when we don't we want to make sure we have it as a solid toy so we're going to look into it we don't have all the answers but we're going to find out gotcha thank you for that clarification because a lot of people were complaining about that and i they asked me personally hey can you please go ask dwight why this happened go yell at him for us yeah. so there you go thank you um dwight thank you so much for the time our pleasure this was awesome and we're here at the hasbro booth thank you so much guys you're watching acba saturday thanks guys thank you dwight what's up guys they call me colonel crackers i know right this guy again but I'm back to give you a quick comparison of these Terminator figures right here from NECA. These are the two ultimate versions of the Terminator from the first Terminator movie. On the left here we've got the Tech Noir version and right here is the Police Station Assault which is the most recent release. Now a lot of similarities between these two figures um, but then there's also a lot of differences as well. The question is if you're only going to buy one which is the one you're going to pick up? Spoiler alert, you're going to want to pick up both. But we're going to run through the similarities, we're going to run through the differences, and maybe at the end of this little segment you'll be able to determine which single one you want to buy if you only want to buy one. So we're going to start with the Tech Noir version right here. This is from the first half of the movie. This is from uh, when he steals the clothes from the punks when he first arrives back in present day or 1984. And you know, he's got a colorful pattern shirt right here, soft pliable gray jacket. He's got a real chain right here underneath his arm. Uh, he's got two trigger fingers on right now, but he does come with an alternate hand right here with a fist. We'll run through the accessories right now so you can see exactly what these guys come with. So like I said, he comes with his fist right here, which goes into his left hand. He's also going to come with this alternate forearm from when he's operating on his arm. I'll bring that in close. There we go. You can see all the gnarly details in there inside the arm. Pretty gross. And then of course it just pegs in right there and it's got articulation, which I'm probably about to snap. Oh, all good, all good. See, look at that. Great. And then he also comes with a pair of medical forceps, which you can barely see that. These are very small. But these are what he uses to operate on his arm right here. So those would go, you know, like right there. And then you could also put it inside of his trigger finger. There's a way to put the, the finger inside of the hole there for the forceps. Also comes with this 45 long slide pistol with the laser sight on top. Pretty sure that's the name of it from the movie. And we've got this Uzi right here. Pretty nice. It comes a little bit warped out of package, I must admit, but you know, it's an easy hair dryer fix. Um, nicely detailed. Not a lot of sculpting, but not a lot of really paint detail on it. And then finally, he comes with this shotgun right here. This is what he steals from the police car. Um, yeah, pretty nice. 
not much detail on it. Again, it comes a little bit warped, but this is a pretty soft plastic. Actually softer than the original releases of the Terminator figures. Tech Noir version, he comes with this version. This head sculpt right here, stock, which is his first head. You know, he still has the long hair and the eyebrows. Uh, pretty great likeness to Schwarzenegger, I gotta say. This is probably the best likeness that they have ever done. The paint on it is really good. The eyes are nice and sharp. He's got that cold stare about him. I think it looks really good. And then he comes with two other head sculpts. This one here is when he gets his eyebrows burned off. You know, when he's chasing Sarah and Kyle through the alley and then they, uh, he runs through the fire and he latches onto their car and he's all steaming and his eyebrows have burned off and his hair is all singed off and short now and he's like smoking and smoldering from that. So this is that face and he's kind of looking to the right a little bit, which is kind of cool. Gives him a different look, you know, right there he's looking straight at you. I think that looks pretty cool. And then for the second, the third head sculpt actually that he comes with is from that same operation scene where his arm is from, the mangled arm, and this is when he's operating on his messed up eye. Pretty great paint detail on there. Again, another great likeness. He's kind of looking up a little bit, you know, kind of looking at the mirror. And then he's got a couple little blood splotches elsewhere. And a nice blood trail coming down the side of his face there. So that is the Tech Noir version. Now next I'm going to bring in the newest release, which is the Police Station Assault. And here he is right here. I'm going to bring him in close. As you can see, this is what I basically call the I'll Be Back version. So this is after he's operated on his eye and he puts on the leather jacket and he emerges from the uh, that hotel room or that dunky little room that he's staying in. And then he operates on his eye, he's got his leather jacket, and he walks down the hallway with his weapons, you know, fully equipped and everything. He's ready to go get Sarah from the police station. So the first head that he comes with is the regular sunglasses head. Again, the I'll be back head, which, again, great likeness. They can capture the likeness a lot better or, you know, more convincingly when they have the sunglasses on him, which is pretty impressive. So that looks good. He's got the nice 80s flare popped collar. He's got some battle damage here on his shoulder right there, as well as on the side of his chest right there. And I believe, yeah, that's an actual hole, two actual holes right there on the jacket. And then on the back, he's got a couple more, three more holes of battle damage there. So that's the figure. And then the other head that he comes with is the sunglasses off face so this is what his face ends up looking like after he operates on it and then he puts the sunglasses on to conceal this now i will say that on this version the police station version the quality of the paint on the eyes is very different than the original tech noir release they went a little bit more heavy-handed on the black outlining, so he ends up looking like he's got a little bit of eyeliner going on, or as most men would call it, guy liner. But it doesn't really look as convincing, like if I bring the other head, for example, same kind of thing, his eyes are looking to the side. But you can see how different the paint technique for the eye is, so I don't know if these were done with a different factory. Um, and again, the skin tone is a little bit different too, but the main thing is the, how they painted the eyes. I really wish they'd done it like this again because these head sculpts on the Tech Noir version are probably the best Schwarzenegger head sculpts as well as paint application. So it's a little bit disappointing that they didn't carry over onto this version here. But everything else is still consistently good. The sculpt is great. He's got the great paint shading in the hair. Actually a little bit more than the other release here. So yeah, a little disappointing but overall still a good looking head. And then his final head sculpt here is the battle damage head sculpt. This originally came on the tanker truck pursuit version, so this is right after the police station when he's chasing them down in that big tanker truck. So same thing, the eye is a little bit heavy on the guy liner, but everything else about it is really good. Lots of really good blood detail on there. Lots of good endoskeleton detail, like the cheek right there and the eye and the part of the skull right here on the forehead. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, that's the head sculpts. Let's bring in uh, his alternate hands now. He's gonna come with these two battle damaged hands. The regular hands that he come with are just, you know, the gloved hands, the motorcycle gloves. And then his hands get all mangled when he's driving the truck and stuff. So he has these battle damaged hands, still has the gloves, lots of good blood detail on there. And then he's also gonna come with this, uh, I believe this is a Smith & Wesson 
pistol. And then it comes with these, uh, this assault rifle right here with the two clips it's taped together with no butt stock. It's black um, with a little bit of a more shiny black down here for the tape, which is very subtle. But yeah, overall pretty good looking gun there. And then his final accessory is his Spas 12 shotgun with no butt stock again. Just a straight black color, not really a lot of paint to speak of here, but it looks good. All right, and that is about it. So that's a complete comparison of all the accessories that come with both of these versions of the Terminator. Um, really, either one you get is going to be really good. It really depends which is your more iconic version of the Terminator. Iconic versions for me is probably the I'll be back version. You know, that's one of the most recognizable lines from the movie. So this right here to me, I keep looking at it as my iconic Terminator, more so than even Terminator 2, you know, this is like the Terminator. But there is something to be said about the Tech Noir version, which is of course, you know, the first look of the Terminator. This is originally how the Terminator looks when he's, when we first see him in action and kill this, the first Sarah Connors. Uh, this is how we see him when he's picking up his weapons. Um, this is how we see him for pretty much the first half of the movie up until he first meets Sarah at the club and then he, you know, sports his new head with the you no know, eyebrows and the shorn head. But it's really up to you. Now, one thing I did when I got the Tech Noir version originally is I, I had the original static leg release of the Tanker Truck Pursuit version, which is almost like a battle damage version of this one right here, the Police Station Assault. So I'm going to bring that in and show you what that looks like, just so some even more slight differences. So this is my custom Ultimate Tanker Truck Pursuit version. Now the big difference here is uh, he's got some battle damage on the chest, which this police station version does not have. So bring it in closer, you can see even more paint detail here. So this is the original paint scheme for the Tanker Truck Pursuit head. Um, it looks pretty good. The one thing I notice is that the the eye doesn't have any of that underlining like this new version does. So this right here is from the new police station assault version and this is the head that the battle damage head that comes with it. And this is the original battle damage head and its paint scheme. You can see it's a little bit different. Obviously it's the same head and same sculpt and everything. But you can see the paint techniques are a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I think I like the original one a little bit more. You know, it's a little bit more subtle, it doesn't have the thick eyelining the bottom one has. It's got a little bit more red on the silver of the of the exposed endoskeleton, which I think adds a little bit more realism to it. Um, you know, I think I like the paint on the, on the original release a little bit better, but it's really a toss-up. You know, it depends on that guy liner issue. But again, it's the same as this police station assault version that we currently have it's just that mine has a little bit more battle damage here on the chest it's a different torso basically everything else is exactly the same I just added the legs from the ultimate tech noir version alright and that right there you guys has been a comparison of the two ultimate terminators from NECA these are the terminator 1 versions the tech noir on the left police station assault on the right and really it's up to you to decide which one you think is the best version to me, again, iconic is the I'll Be Back version on the right, but this one is equally great and actually comes with even more accessories than the other version. But like I said at the beginning, you're going to want to get both, honestly. They both represent good looks from the movie. You're going to want all those accessories, all those different Arnold heads, all those different guns. Uh, they're both very much worth it. All right, guys, there you go. Thanks a lot. Minute. Min Reviews! Hey everybody, how's it going? Ponchezy here coming at you real quick for a one minute review of the SH Figuarts legendary Super Saiyan 3 Brawly head sculpt. That is a mouthful, holy cow. So, uh, as you can probably already tell, this is not an official SH Figuarts sanctioned product. Uh, it is made by third party Chinese customizers, but it does do the job of looking like an official SH Figuarts product 
pretty well. Not only does it look the part, but it plays the part too. It fits pretty well on the Brawly, and in the right poses and the right circumstances, you can get them looking really, really dope. But it isn't without its faults. Its high price point of 40 bucks, its lack of articulation, and the fact that it makes the already top-heavy Brawly figure even more top-heavy are unfortunately cons you just can't ignore. At the end of the day, if you want to add some more flair and pizzazz to your SH Figure Arts lineup with this head sculpt, and you have another Brawly on hand to go ahead and display this, it's pretty dope. Go ahead and make the choice for yourself, but you better act fast because there's only 500 pieces worldwide at the time of this recording. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one minute review. If you guys want a more in-depth unboxing and impressions for this face sculpt, go ahead and check out my full length video. But for the time being, enjoy the rest of the episode. Peace! Yes, sir, we're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you with this month's bump segment. This is where we highlight shots that originated in the Articulated Comic Book Arc Facebook group, things that were very well received, got a lot of likes. Mostly we start off with pics that made the ACBA Sunday special on Instagram. So these are pics that originated in Facebook. They graduated to the uh, Sunday special feature on IG. And this one here is from July 3rd, 2016. This is from my man, Ost Villarus, AKA at Prince Draco, D-R-A-C-O. This one was very clean. He was one of the first people to get the new Spider-Man wave. And he's got Miles Morales and Peter Parker here giving a little fist bump on top of a building. Everything here is just very clean, cropped and contained. The triple C's of ACBA, the sky looks amazing. I believe that's a com computer monitor backdrop. Everything here just looks really, really good. Good work. Next up, we're looking at a pic from my man, Mark Wong, AKA MW Photography on Instagram. That's M as in Mary, W as in Y, P-H-O-T-O-Y-G-R-A-P-H-Y. That is his Instagram handle. This got a lot of love in the group. You know, Spider-Man always gets a ton of love, but this is actually a very good photo. It's not just, you know, Spider-Man and automatically gets a bunch of likes. This was very well put together. He's got the Marvel Select Venom and the old Toy Biz uh, McFarlane style Spider-Man. Venom's busting through the wall here. The diorama looks great. The lighting looks great. Did a nice job with the polyester to make it look like smoke. That actually may be cotton and not polyester, but it looks very, very good. I really like the lighting on this one here. Uh, up over 1200 likes on instagram almost at 1300 likes so if you haven't checked this out on instagram check it out on the uh, acb sunday special hashtag and again uh great great shot to my man mark right here this right here was very creative very innovative this is a shot from my man uh chris webb aka we shoot toys on instagram so that's w-e-s-h-o-o-t-t-o-y-s this is uh, reminiscent of the uh, anime Ghost in the Shell. He has that figure here from Figma. He went through great lengths to put this shot together, had to do a lot, and he actually put up a V-side or a video uh, showcasing the making of this shot and how he did it. And it was very, very creative. The lighting here is amazing. Everything looks very, very good. Uh, this guy, uh, not as much uh, love as I thought it would on Instagram being, you know, something from an anime usually that gets a ton of love but uh again if you haven't checked this out check it out on ig great work chris next up this was a shot from my man abshek route i always say i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly but its instagram handle is articulated underscore toyographer so that's articulated spelled how it would normally be spelled underscore t-o-y-o-g-r-a-p-h-e-r and this is a really really good shot a nice blend of practical effects with the computer monitor and it's great a uh, nice little touch he did with the claws scraping the ground and the sparks and he used a little polyester there for smoke and he's got the legendary riders wolverine here doing riding a motorcycle so it looks really really good a lot of love and the group a lot of love on instagram up over 1200 likes almost 1300 likes on instagram and this was his third sunday special feature he's got a knack for knocking these out great work so my bad, I forgot to mention the uh, Ghost in the Shell shot from uh, Chris Webb was the Sunday special for July 17th, 2016. And then the shot for uh, Articulated Toyographer was the Sunday special for July 24th, 2016. And now we are at 
July 31st, 2016, the very last day of July. And uh, this was a shot here from Arthur Jr. This was really, really creative, a really fun shot. He's got a really old school uh, Aquaman figure here, fishing out Dory. Everything here was practical. He did some splashing on his own and I guess reduced the shutter speed on his uh, camera and was able to capture the water splashing up to look as if it's the water splashing from Dory coming up out of the, the water here. This was really nicely done, natural light, Got a lot of love in the, in the group, uh, up, up, up over 1,100 likes on Instagram. This was really well re received, just a really fun shot. People really enjoyed this one and so did I. So great work here from Arthur Jr. And that is his handle on Instagram as well, at ArthurJR. All right, so those were the Sunday specials for the month of July. You know, obviously in July, it was July 4th. We had a lot of nice 4th of July picks here. This was one from uh, my man Larry Salas here. Computer monitor, I'm pretty sure, but he did a pretty decent blend here. This is one here from my man Cedric Bacon, who seems to make it in the episode every single month. This is a nice one. Um, and next up, we got one here from my man Shannon Bowie. Uh, I guess he was inspired by the Luke Cage trailer that looks great. This is from my man Brandosaurus Rex here. Um, I think this is one of the newest Godzillas that came out. Always really, really nice shots and doing a good job of putting in cutouts in the shot. This is a simple one from my man Simon Hill here. One little cutout, but this is still ACBA at its finest. It looks really vibrant, looks really clean. This one here from my man Cody Craig, one of the new SH figure watts. Uh, Luke Skywalker drop. This is the uh, New Hope Luke Skywalker. This is really colorful and nice for my man Sal Mejia Jr. Uh, this one here I want to say is from Gary Rivers. I believe so. Yes, this is really nice. Nice colors. I like that a lot. CJ killed it on this one here. I do know that he did erase the stand in Photoshop, but fuck it. This is clean. Real nice. Uh, thanks to everybody who made a purchase of the ACB cutouts this past uh, week. We sold out of the, the two cutout packs that we had up. Look for a Deadpool pack to come very soon. We still do have the ACBA pose in this half the battle shirt and the red NWO shirt up for pre-order right now on the ACBA website. Check that out in the underbar. Tendrils in red and black are still up for sale or up for pre-order right now in the shop. All of these things that are up for pre-order right now should be shipping second week of September. Some things a little earlier, like flight stands here, which will be shipping now for the most part if you ordered a single flight stand pack. Thanks. And I hate to end on a somber note, uh, but unfortunately we received word that between, I guess the night of Thursday the 25th and the morning of Friday the 26th that uh, our comrade Glenn Webb passed away. He passed away peacefully and asleep. We don't really know the specifics on how he passed. And, you know, honestly, it's, it's probably a little touchy to even ask those questions right now. Let's just celebrate Glenn's life. And I'm just here to extend my, uh, my condolences to his family and friends. And obviously he'll be missed. He was somebody that was very well liked and loved in the community, influenced a lot of people, great reviewer, great YouTuber, just a great personality in general. And um, again, we just want to extend our condolences to, to his family and friends. This hit me very, very hard. Uh, a lot of the losses that we've had in the community over the past years have hit me very, very hard. And uh, just want to say rest in power. Peace.